Here's an idea. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a masterclass in concept distillation. If you're watching this, there's a fairly good chance you've heard about The Legend of Zelda at some point. Young man with a green hat, it's dangerous to go alone, there's usually a princess, she's usually in danger, and the goal is to defeat the Dark Lord Ganon. With 18 main series games so far, the Zelda franchise has been hugely popular, and many of its titles are considered to be among the best in gaming history. First appearing in 1986 on the NES, most of its installments are linear action-adventure games with a focus on puzzle solving and they're generally divided into distinct dungeons. Breath of the Wild, the most recent sequel, is a little different. You're in a world with no seatbelts, climbing, gliding, and exploring freely. Well received by critics and fans alike, Breath of the Wild is arguably Zelda at its best. But why? What makes the game that goes against the traditional structure of Zelda such a great example of the series as a whole? To answer that, we need to understand concept distillation. Distillation, you mean like water and chemistry? Well, yeah, exactly. When we think of distilling water, we think of turning questionable source material into that pure, pure good stuff at the end of the process. We boil the water into steam, leaving behind the imperfections and dirt and non-water stuff, and then we condense it back into drinkable liquid water. So how does this apply to media? One example might be the Dark Knight himself, Batman. Through the years, Batman has shifted tone, appearance, and target demographic. Think about it, Michael Keaton, George Clooney, Adam West, Will Arnett, they're all very different and unique, but they're all unmistakably Batman. And the similarities between these different versions is the distillation of the franchise. To paraphrase Batmite, Batman's rich history allows him to be interpreted in a multitude of ways. A lighter incarnation is no less valid and true to character than a tortured Avenger crying out for mommy and daddy. Similarly, through all of Link's incarnations, many drastic changes have been made in perspective, tone, art style, method of transport, controls, you name it. So when Breath of the Wild ventures from the typical series focus on linearly completing puzzle-filled dungeons in favor of a more free-flowing open-world style, it shouldn't be too surprising because experimenting with new ideas is one thing that you can really count on from a new Zelda install. Concept distillation doesn't always produce positive results. Which elements you choose to distill matters a lot. When the emphasis is placed on the wrong components, like in Skyward Sword, you get a poor interpretation of what it means to be or play a Zelda game. Instead of freedom and exploration, you get overly explained directions that make you feel trapped. And you see this in other media too. M. Night Shyamalan's The Last Airbender lost what made the original series so endearing. Instead of seeing Aang grow into the wise avatar, you got Ong, who was wise beyond his years from the beginning. It filtered out a major component of the series. Growth. So what makes Zelda, Zelda? Is Zelda at its Zeldiest when Link wears a green hat? Is it all about the dungeons? Is the Master Sword what connects these stories? Once you remove all the fluff, what is the pure essence of Zelda? That's exactly the question lead producer Eiji Aonuma asked himself during development. The team behind the game reduced Zelda to its core. What mattered most wasn't what Link was wearing or what horse he rode, but the players need to explore the world in order to save Hyrule. Sure, they kept other elements, like the Master Sword, but they aren't the focus. Breath of the Wild embraces the original NES game and the idea of exploration. Series creator Shigeru Miyamoto has talked about the original game being inspired by exploring caves near his house as a kid. The map starts out empty, so you must tread into the unknown. Why 100 mini dungeons? To make sure you explore, instead of just heading straight to the next objective. The whole gameplay experience feels very natural and real. So what do you think makes a concept distillation effective? Do you agree that Breath of the Wild encompasses the essence of Zelda? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this. Just to explain a little bit more what this is, Idea Channel was a show on YouTube here produced by PBS Digital Studios, and it has come to an end. Some of the fans got together and said, let's make our own Idea Channel, and everyone can contribute. So we made a Discord channel and a forum, links where links go, and now we have a YouTube channel. Obviously, you're here. Uh, so if you want to answer the questions in the episode or contribute to the next episode, even just by picking a topic or even just by disagreeing with someone else in a respectful and constructive way, we really want to hear from you. Um, if you think this is a cool idea, go ahead and join on the Discord. You're totally welcome to contribute in whatever way you want or just enjoy it, um, if that's your style. 
so I probably won't be the host for every episode. I'm just doing the first one. And then we're gonna have a rotating selection of posts, so if that's your bag, you can uh, do just voice only, and we'll do animated stick figure stuff. Um, it's new, so we're still figuring a lot of things out. Um, it's a great chance to jump in early and, and put your mark on it. So hopefully we'll see you again next month with episode two. If you want to vote on that topic, I believe it's down there. Um, can't wait. I'll see you around.